Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a video on how to do a one person brake fluid flush or change or bleed. Uh, this is extremely helpful, especially on track days. If you're gonna do some maintenance beforehand or just general automotive maintenance for your brake system, regardless of whether you're tracking the car or just using your daily driver. So today, we're gonna focus on my 2022 Camaro SS 1LE, which has a six piston and four piston Brembo brake setup. The process that we use is gonna be the similar, regardless of what kind of vehicle you have. So let's get started. A few things you'll need to flush the brake fluid by yourself is a one-person brake bleeder bottle. I picked this one up on Amazon from All Star Performance. I'll include the link in the description. You'll also need the proper brake fluid. Check the requirements for your car to see what is recommended, but I'll be using this high-performance DOT4 Endless RF650. I've had great results with this fluid in the past, and I really like the pedal feel that it gives. You'll also need an 11 millimeter wrench for the bleeder valves themselves. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you've vented your brake master cylinder. As you can see here, I've already got it loosened up. But, you know, look for your brake master cylinder underneath your engine bay. Pretty easily spotted. Usually we'll have some lettering like dot three or dot four or some writing all around it. So just loosen that. And just leave it vented, it'll make it easier for fluid transfer. The next steps to getting your fluid bled or flushed out is to find the bleeder valves at the caliper. Some calipers have one bleeder valve. Other calipers, like high performance Brembo or AP Racing brake calipers, have two valves, one for each side. For example, here on the Brembo 1LE caliper, you've got two one there and one back there. You'll wanna follow the manufacturer recommended bleeding procedure. In this case on the Camaro, the procedure is rear right, left front, left rear, right front. And in particular on the caliper, you wanna bleed the inside bleeder first, meaning this one back here, and then the outside caliper, or the outside bleeder next. The first step, is to remove the little rubber nipple that is covering and protecting the bleeder valve from dirt, debris, and things like that. Sometimes the little rubber nipple needs some assistance getting out. So a small flat head or a pair of pliers to kind of help coax it off, I usually get the trick. We'll set those aside in a safe spot. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to connect the one person bleeder bottle somewhere above the bleeder valve itself. Next step is to crack the valve open. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't take a lot of strength or effort to get these valves loosened or tightened. So don't go all Hercules mode and crank these things down. The last thing you want to do is strip the threads between the bleeder valve and your caliper. Once you've cracked the valve open, you'll probably notice some fluid coming through. This is a one-way check valve bottle. So when we push the brake pedal, it'll force the fluid in, and when we release the pedal, it'll make the check valve in there stop or close. So 
that air doesn't get back into the system. The next step here is going into the car, pressing the brake pedal a few times. And you'll see the bottle will start to fill up with fluid. Now, as you can see, the fluid color here is pretty good, but that's because this car only has about 2,000 miles on it. We're replacing the factory fill fluid with the higher performance endless RF650. Now that we've pumped some of the fluid out, we can tighten the valve. Again, try not to tighten it too much. And then we can check the fluid level at the reservoir to make sure it's not too low. So remembering that we don't want the reservoir to drop too low, we want to make sure that we keep an eye on the fluid level. Right now it's down there. The max fill line is close to the top of the contour of the bottle. We're just going to add a little bit more fluid. Lightly put the cap back on. Now that we've finished with the inside of the bleeder valve, we can carefully remove the vacuum line. I like to raise it up to let the remaining fluid that's in the tube drop back into the bottle. And then we can attach it to the outside bleeder and repeat the process. Crack it open. Give a few pumps in the car. Once you finish with the outside bleeder, make sure to tighten it back up. Remove the nozzle. Let the remaining fluid drain into the bottle. Take the bottle, move on to the next wheel. Starting at the rear rotor, or caliper in this case, process is the same. We'll connect the fluid, uh, the catch can hose onto the inside bleeder first. Make sure the the bottle itself is higher than the bleeder valve. Go ahead and loosen the rear valve. And pump the brake a few times. Retighten the valve. Move to the outside bleeder. And repeat the process. When your fluid bottle gets full, don't forget to empty it out. Follow your local laws and regulations on how to dispose of the fluid properly. One thing we want to look for when doing the fluid flush 
is the color of the fluid itself. The old fluid will be brown or bronze or even black. The new fluid should be clear. Now that we've done all four corners, we want to make sure we get the very last corner again to flush all the remaining old fluid out by continuing to pump more fluid through the brake system. When you're all set and done, make sure to clean up the area around the bleeder valves with brake clean and a rag. One trick I like to do when it comes to getting all the fluid off of the calipers is to use a toothpick and place it inside of the bleeder valve. And you'll see it push out any of the residual fluid. Then, I wipe away the fluid and then I spray it with the brake clean, just as that extra step. Remember, brake fluid is extremely corrosive, so the reason I do this is to make sure that it doesn't eat away the paint on the caliper itself. I like to let the toothpicks sit for at least five, 10 minutes just to absorb any of the fluid that might still be in there. Then once that's done, don't forget to put the bleeder valve cover back on. A great way to check the level is to put a light behind the fluid reservoir. Now that I'm all done, you can see the new fluid is right at the max line. Don't forget, to tighten the cap once you're done. Last thing you want is all that fluid coming out into the engine. Bay. As I mentioned earlier, it's extremely corrosive to paint. Put the cap on, make sure any spills are cleaned up properly. So there we have it. We're all done. Fluid system is flushed ready to go on. Let me know what you think about the video. Please leave comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. If you have any questions on anything else.